Hi everyone, welcome to Winding Down with Angel. Today is election day, and I don't know about you, but I'll be glad when it's over. <laughs> I'm kind of over it. Um, so I figured I'd take a few moments and wind down, have a few glasses of wine. Um, today I am drinking Menage a Trois. It is a 2014 Cabernet Sauvignon from California. This wine is my second go-to house wine uh, for reds. It's very, very light, yet it has a really, really bold, lingering, long, yummy taste. Um, this pairs fantastic with red meats, chicken. Um, my favorite cheese would be like a sharp cheddar cheese. The best thing to pair this wine with is dark chocolate. Extremely yummy with dark chocolate. Um, this is probably, you know, the most proper, most appropriate way to drink your Merlot. Very good. But I'm not always proper and I'm not always appropriate. So check out my new glass. Finally a wine glass that fits my needs. And this is so friggin' awesome. I love this glass. I got it off of Amazon. Um, that wine, Menage Natois, is extremely reasonable in price. It's perfect for the holidays. If you have to have like a lot of wine in the house, if you're entertaining a lot, if you're gonna have a lot of guests over, um, like I said, it goes great with meats, um, all your little creamy side dishes that you're gonna have, all your little pumpkin spicy desserts that you're gonna have, um, chocolate especially. Um, but that's one that you can get in bulk and literally like buy by the case. It won't um, break your bank. So check it out. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to have one more sip before I get to my topic. <clears throat> Very good. <clears throat> okay. So today... I want to talk about something fun, um, something that I think is very, very important in a marriage and in a relationship, which is sex and how to spice up your sex life. And, um, or I should I say your love life. Okay. Because, you know, some people will say, well, it's not always about sex. Well, it kind of is sometimes not always everything based around sex but it's extremely important in a marriage and in a relationship so um for those of you who don't know my husband and i have a child uh, with special needs so the cards kind of stacked against us you know the odds are definitely not in our favor when it comes to divorce you know statistically we're at a bigger risk of getting divorced so we have to work super extra hard at our marriage more so probably than other people not saying everybody doesn't have to work at marriage because you do but for us um, we have to really put in the extra work and you know sex is vital in a relationship sex is extremely important in a marriage um, it's a it's a way for a couple to be intimate and to connect and kind of rejuvenate after a really hard stressful day so, um, you know, one thing I want to say to people is, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. That's one thing I want to say. And what I mean by that and why I'm saying that is because, you know, so many people will say, well, honey, you know, grass isn't greener on the other side. Mm, yes, it is. <laughs> it very well damn can be greener on the other side. So you have to really nurture your marriage take care of your own lawn fertilize it protect it put the little you know mothballs to protect from snakes coming in there and trying to get into your marriage because there's snakes out there and they will if you don't protect what's yours and take care of it um <clears throat> another thing i want to say is everybody's replaceable Women don't think that you're not replaceable. You know, people don't get too comfortable. Men don't think that, you know, look, there's always gonna be someone prettier. There's always gonna be somebody with a better body. There's always gonna be men that make more money than you guys. You know, there's always, you know, so the way I like to look at things, 
the way I say grounded and humbled, and I think my husband too, is we know this. You know, we know that we have to work at our marriage. I'm not saying that we could easily be taken from each other, but you know, you just can't get comfortable. You can't fall into a rut. And sex, love making is a very vital part of a relationship and a marriage. And you, you have to keep that hot and spicy and alive and interesting. And you know, cause it could get boring. You could fall into a rut. You could find yourself doing the same things over and over and over again, or not at all. Because look, everybody's busy. Everybody has life. Most people have kids. Some people have two, three, four, five, six kids. And I know you're exhausted at the end of the night. Trust me, my husband and I are up every single hour with our daughter. And she gets up at 3.30 every single morning. So talk about hard. You talk about having to work at a marriage, having to work at keeping your sex life alive. Trust me, we have to work. So, um... A couple things that I'll share with you today in my vlog and again the reason I do this vlog is for me and this in particular helps me kind of stay grounded and kind of helps me stay in check because then I have to practice what I preach I can't be a hypocrite and tell other people to do things or you know share what works if I'm not doing it myself so Trust me when I say, we're doing what I'm telling you to do. I'm not going to give you advice that I'm not taking myself, or I'm not going to tell you to do something that I haven't already tried and know that it works. Um, so one thing that Chris and I have started to do is we have started a compliment jar. So what we do with this is every single day, we write a compliment, and we stick it in the jar, and we close it, and we have been reading them on our date nights or our date days. Um, but actually this week, we've kind of been taking one out and reading it each night to each other because it's been kind of a hard week. So, you know, it's, it's very much a pick-me-up. And I'm going to go ahead and read one to you guys. Um, I don't know who's... I'll just grab one. I don't know who's I'm grabbing. Um, okay. So, this one says... This is from Chris to me. Thank you for taking pride in cutting daddy's hair. I feel you love me so much. I have never been loved like this before. I love you. So that's so sweet, baby. Thank you. Um, so again, really small. Doesn't cost a thing. Only takes a minute. Don't tell me you don't have time to do it. You know, if you think back, um, when's the last time you gave your husband or, a, or your wife a compliment? Um, some people go days, weeks, months without giving their husband or their wife a compliment. And it, it matters. It's important that your spouse know that you still find them attractive, that there are certain things you notice about them that you like. And you have to tell them. You have to let them know that, you know, they mean something to you and that you're noticing. Another thing that Chris and I like to do is, um, okay, let me back up a minute. Everybody's busy, like I said, but one thing that I've just kind of realized over the years and, you know, in my own personal experience, again, I'm not going to talk about things I don't know about other people, but what I have learned is people have kind of, you know, gotten away from foreplay. Some people really don't even know what it is. And so foreplay is extremely important in sex. And, um, so one thing that I'll challenge you to do, which is um, a fun um, little activity, experiment, kind of homework assignment for you to do, is everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a timer on their cell phone, right? <clears throat> so you set your timer for 30 minutes. And for those 30 minutes, you and your husband, your wife, your spouse, whoever, have to take that 30 minutes to get to know each other's bodies, experiment, explore, Try new things, get out of your comfort zone, incorporate things into that time that maybe you've never done before. Um, you know, lotions, massages, candles, um, foods. Food's really fun. You play around with food a little bit. Um, and I'm going to say the T word, and I'm sorry if this offends some people, but toys. Toys are a lot of fun, um, you know, to, to play around with an experiment. And also, I'll say the same thing about porn. Sorry, um, 
If it offends you, I'm sorry. If you were that person who I would never, well then don't ever. But also don't knock it till you try it. And, um, you know, I'm not talking about hardcore porn, you know, there's a lot of really nice exotic movies that you and your spouse go watch together um, that might kind of spice things up a, li a little bit, you know, we're visual people, you know, and also on that note, keep the lights on. If you're one of those people who always have to have the lights off and you're embarrassed or you're shy, listen, this is the person that you supposedly chose to spend the rest of your life with. You should be able to explore, experiment, look at each other. I'm like, so we're very sexual, visual creatures. And also on that note, and I'm jumping around a little bit because I'm kind of getting excited. One thing I want to say is men are very, very physical, okay? Women are more emotional and mental. And that goes for everything, not just sex. Um, women in general are just emotional creatures. Now, when it comes to sex, I have found um, in my lifetime and from just people I've known, girlfriends I talk to, things like that, you know, men are just so physical that they can go right to it. Like, they don't need a lot of anything. They can just go right to it. Women need a little bit more, okay? Don't, don't just, you know, don't just do your thing and think you're going to get anything more out of me or don't come at me like that and expect to get anything more than a no, I have a headache. You know, you got to put some work into it. That's why I say foreplay is so important. But men, if you could tap into women emotionally, you know, get into their psyche, figure out what's going on with them emotionally, start off there, romancing them, talking to them, touching them, touching their bodies, doing things, you know, learning about them. There may be some things that your partner or your wife doesn't like and you didn't know that, or maybe some things that she loves and you've never taken the time to get to know that. Well, those 30 minutes, you can get to know your spouse. You can get to figure out and know what exactly each other likes. And it, it's going to actually be an experience. It's going to be an encounter. It's going to be something memorable. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, I don't have time for that. You know, I got kids, kids getting up an hour. I've worked all day. You know, I just got home from work. I had to clean the house, give the kids a bath, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we all have that. We all have lives. We're all busy. We're all tired. All I'm trying to say is you want to keep your marriage alive. You want to spice up your sex life. You want to keep your husband or your wife interested. And if you're tired of being in a rut, try these things. What do you have to lose? And I'm not saying it's got to be every single day, seven days a week. Make a date. Make a sex date. Now, I'm going to say that I used to be one that frowned on that. Um, you know, I'm not making a date to have sex. I'm not, you know, Tuesday's not going to be sex day. Listen, it's work. You put everything else on your phone. You have calendars for everything else. This is important. This is should be the most important appointment of your week because you are spending time with your husband or your wife. You're working on your marriage. You're nurturing your grass. You're keeping your grass green. So mark, pick a day. Pick a day during the week that's going to be your sex day your 30 minutes with your husband or your wife. And remember, in those 30 minutes, no matter what you're doing, no matter how hot and spicy and horny you get, no intercourse. No intercourse for 30 minutes. Try it. So, I don't know. Those are just a couple of things that Chris and I, um, you know, have found work for us. And, you know, I'll leave with one more note. Um, one thing that we also like to do is write letters to each other. And again, this could help kind of spice up your sex life as well. If you even incorporate reading a love letter to each other in those 30 minutes that you have, um, we have, you know, we've kind of gone back in time, <clears throat> written a letter to each other that, you know, maybe you're writing a letter about what you wish you would have said when you first started dating. Maybe you were too shy. Maybe you were too embarrassed. Maybe you just wish you would have said something. You know, put it in a letter. Put it in a little love note. You know, it doesn't cost anything. And there's something to be said about reading a letter 
out loud and hearing your husband or your wife say those words to you. Um, you know, if, if you're not a big writer, which it doesn't have to be a long drawn out poem, but you know, okay, if you buy a card, you know, a 99 cent card from the dollar store, but read it out loud. See how, see what different effect that has when you actually are talking to your husband or your wife um, instead of just handing them a card or a letter and letting them read in it. Um, I don't know. I hope that this vlog was um, entertaining, helpful, and you know, I don't know, if, if you like it, and if you try some of these things, drop a comment. Um, if you have a question or whatever, drop a comment and I'll get back to you on it. But I'm curious to see who tries these things out and who it works for. It works for us. Again, marriages work and you gotta put the time in. Sex is important, sex is fun. So try some of those things out. Let me know what you think. Keep whining. One more cheers to you. Thank you for watching my vlog. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Keep whining.